Join Dalton and Jacob as they discuss the ever-changing world of trading card games. TCG Buzz starts now. Hello and welcome to TCG Talk. My name is Jacob and this is Bryce. Back at it again with another discussion video. Um, so this is a sequel to a video we did a couple months ago. Uh, where we talked, uh, let me rephrase, I talked about <laughs> uh, investing in Pokemon cards, and the reaction to that was pretty positive, although there were a couple people who were like, Neh! but uh, I think it, we had some great discussion and debate within the comments and whatnot, and in you know, some Pokemon groups, and so I thought it would be fun to uh, come back to the subject, because yeah. uh, I have more. <laughs> Uh, so if you haven't checked out that first one, please do so. And while I'm in the uh, mood to give you guys some plugs, please make sure to check out some of our other videos. Uh, and of course, support us on Patreon and check out our Discord and all that. And we're done with the YouTube pluggy stuff. Let's get into the actual discussion. So you brought everything to the table for this one, right? Um, go Pikachu, go. <laughs> <laughs> but right. but no, I'm the dumb dumb again this time. So Jacob's going to not only enlighten me, but you too as well. Uh Bryce is not a big Pokemon card guy, but you have invested in card games in the past. Mm -hmm. The only thing I've actually invested in Pokemon was the video game itself and oof. Oh. Oof. Af after Gen 4 was big oofs for me. No, 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 no. Gen 5 is the best. But Don't give me that. The the first one was really good. Second one, it was okay. And then everything went bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, uh, Mega Evolutions. Oh, you ruined everything. Gen 6 wasn't even that bad, besides being horribly easy. Anyways, we've already wasted a minute talking about the Pokemon games, when we can talk about how you can use Pokemon to make money, maybe, kind of. And specifically... Uh, please, there were some questions about this. I'm not some greedy hoarder who's just, like, not into Pokemon, who's just trying to make money. If these things were worthless and would always be worthless, I'd still be buying them because I love collecting Pokemon cards. My favorite thing isn't playing the game. I don't play it. Uh, I don't enjoy the gameplay of the Pokemon card game. But I enjoy collecting them and looking through my binder and, most importantly, showing other people my cards and telling them the interesting stories behind some of them. I will say Pokemon does have a lot of really good full arts, and then there's the other ones that are like, but why? Yeah, there's some great-looking Pokemon cards. Uh, so the way we're going to do this is I'm going to talk about a good thing you should be investing in, uh, whether it's to make money or to just increase the value of your trade binder so you've got you know more weight when you're trading for the cards you actually want, or if it's just something that you want to pass down to your grandkids, you know, <laughs> like a pog or a beanie baby. Back in my day, we died from poison by taking steps. <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I have the wrong set of notes for a different episode pulled up. So uh, <laughs> technical difficulties, please stand by. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about a good thing first, because I like to keep it positive. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about are sealed packs for POP series packs. Uh, POP, if you don't know, stands for Pokemon Organized Play. Uh, they're very similar, if you're familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh! to OTS or tournament packs. So they're packs you get for participating in tournaments at your local game store. <laughs> the reason you might not have heard of them is they stopped doing them in, like, 2010. Um... So they're sealed booster packs you'd get for participating in a tournament with typically two cards per pack. And they're, are they non-foils? They're non-foils. No foils, which is the good thing about it. That's already a bonus. You can't even weigh them. That's the thing. You cannot weigh pop packs. I think there's one pop pack with foils in it. I might be wrong on that. But there are some extremely expensive cards in them, especially in Pop Series 5, obviously, uh, that they can't be weighed. And the amount that exist in the world is just going down because people like to open them. The point with that is, is some people might say, oh, well, just get Pop Series 5. It's the one with the, 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 the big the fetch cards, the evolutions people want. I'm saying, no, all of them are good value, and the other ones are quite underrated right now. So... Hey, remember when people said Sensei's Divining Top was a bad card? Look at the guy who made out like a bandit when you had a stack of them. <laughs> uh, so we're going to cover a bad thing now. And Bryce, you can... I'm sure you understand this one. This is one of the easiest to understand. Current meta staples. 
Uh, so some examples of that, I'll go back to one from X and Y, one from Sun and Moon, and one current. Uh, so during the X and Y format, one of the big staples was Shanem EX. A base rarity Shanem EX got up to like 80 bucks, and you needed four for a deck. That with the full it. art at times being up to like 150. I saw that deck once. I was like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of here. Uh, it's, it's pretty absurd. Uh, it was out of Roaring Skies, which was a pretty good set overall. Um, so people got hyped for it and thought, oh, these would be good sealed. Or some people, I was seeing people pick up graded copies of Shanem's, you know, the full art or the base one, for two, three times premium over their current market value at the time. Do you want to know how much those Shanems are worth now? Five to ten dollars, depending on the print. Oof. Next one. Tapu Lele. From uh, Burning Shadows. No, Crimson Invasion. Burning Shadows or Crimson Invasion? Isn't I don't... that the, the, the crazy looking like guy who's got like the shield on his That's arms? That's Tapu Coco. It's, uh, it's his sister. The pink one. They have genders? No. <laughs> I just assumed it. <laughs> um, so Tapu Lele was a ridiculously good staple card. Uh, it never quite got to Shanem's price, but it hit up to like $25, dollars $30, uh, I think at one point it peaked at like 55 for the base rarity, uh, which I think is when I sold mine. Uh, that card now is a dollar? Again, I saw people buying graded copies for 100 plus. Best investment, 10 out of 10. <laughs> uh, and then the current one is Zycan V. That's the, is that the Sword Legendary or Shield Legendary? It's the, uh, I think I, it's I, Sword. I, I want to say that's Sorty Boy. Yeah, Sorty Boy. Uh, it's currently like 30 bucks for the base rarity, um, and people, you know, are buying up their copies. But in just a couple months, not to date this episode, um, they're reprinting it in a tin. <laughs> so guess what's not going to be worth anything? <laughs> Uh, to give Pokemon credit for that, uh, it's one of the best games for budget players because they're very good at reprinting expensive cards. Uh, the problem is that means those cards will never have value. Now, granted, if you're a competitive player, you're going to buy them anyways just to play them. But if you're not a hyper competitive player who needs the, the best deck of the format, I would say if you pull them, just get rid of them. Sell them. Right away. And it's kind of funny you say that because Dragon Ball was actually the cheapest card game for a while. Not by much, but for a while until these last couple of sets where the market kind of figured itself out. I bought a couple packs of, is it, I think it was Ultra Prism. I bought like three packs and I pulled, I pulled a hyper rare Rayquaza GX and I immediately flipped it for 90 bucks. Just, you can't complain. Yeah. And I think it's down to like. 15 oh, that's, that's right i was there for that what was it last year yeah yeah, yeah you were there it was yeah good. i was like oh well i wish i could be a baller like this dude <laughs> so i think that one's pretty obvious but i've got some maybe less obvious ones coming up but we're gonna move back to good ones uh so this is english southern islands so southern islands is one of my favorite sets of all time for pokemon uh and it's a small subset and the way it worked in Japan is you'd buy a postcard, and it would come with three trading cards. I was going to say cards, but I'm like, I want to differentiate them between the two types of cards. And the three cards would have connecting art that would equal the art on the postcard. And they're all island-themed, right? Hmm. And there were like five sets of them. So in total, there's fi no, there's six sets. So there's 18 cards in total. So was it like all the regions, like Hoenn, Johto? No, this was way back in the day. Uh, it was it was one of the first sets to have Johto Pokemon in it though, like Meryl. God, Tyranitar and Toga Monster. Um, so there's 18 cards and they're cheap. They're they're getting more expensive. But my uh, the thing is, if I find it so odd that the English and Japanese ones are basically the same price. Um, I've gotten a couple deals on Japanese cards, but essentially they're about the same. And that's totally wrong because uh, if you don't know, uh, maybe you already do collect Southern Islands. It's a really easy set to just complete one full set of. It's 18 cards, right? Um, the print run for the English versus the Japanese is ridiculously different. I'd say the Japanese population is easily 10 to 20 times the English. Uh, because Japan loves small novelty sets and stuff like that, 
whereas they're not nearly as popular here. In fact, here they didn't even release them as like the postcard things. They just released them all in one binder together because for whatever reason, we in English don't like buying just a couple, you know, secret layers, basically, <laughs> you know. Oh, my God. that That's a discussion for another day on yeah. that whole thing. Uh, so that's definitely one I'd be grabbing up cards of. Uh, next, are you ready? Uh, we actually discussed this one in the car on our drive over. Banned cards. Not banned cards like, oh, this card's so powerful, it had to be banned out of the format. No, I'm talking censored cards. That They call them, a lot of people call them banned cards for whatever reason, because, oh, this art got banned. No, they're just censored. Right? They're child-friendly. There are a couple examples. For the American audience. There's uh, the Misty's Tears, I want to say it is, uh, where... The Japanese version has a little bit of side boob showing because uh, she's naked. Oh, but she's like oh, man. pressing a star you up to her chest, just so you don't see the the. That's like an eleven year old girl. Get it? I, right I think the only one who's more depressed than the card itself is the artist for that. Card. There's a there's a Grimer where he's looking up at a girl's up a girl's skirt, whereas in the English they just edited his eyes so they're looking forward instead. Because Japan. There's a card of, like, a, a, a farmer feeding a centric from, like, a fake nipple that got censored. Uh, and then there's I for, also... I honestly forgot about that one. A couple Japanese cards that feature meijis. You know, I don't want to say the word so we get demonetized. <laughs> but, you know, the, the symbol that's uh, quite controversial in the West due to a group that existed in the 1930s and 40s. <laughs> Demonetized. <laughs> um, that symbol is not taboo in Japan, and it's used especially on like ninja cards, uh, and people collect them. And you know what? I say good on you. I think that's a great thing to collect because they're interesting novelty things. You know, you want to show your friend, look at this card that you could have pulled in a booster set if we weren't so weird as you know, and got our cards censored as kids because they can't show tit. But yet they had no problem showing that one Pokemon episode until years later they banned it. Heck, two of them, in aired? fact. Well, there was the epilepsy one with Porygon. And that then, never aired here. And then but there I was don't the one where the James went one. to the swimsuit contest. I hope it aired. I don't know. It aired for like two months. Um, so there are other band episodes, too. Also, they changed the intro because... Like the one uh, where the tentacruel knocks down the, the towers. <laughs> the twin towers. <laughs> um, <laughs> getting off trap. So I, I do think those are great things to buy just if you want them for your collection. But if you're thinking they're going to be a great investment for the future, no. First of all, the differences in a lot of these are not significant enough for them to matter, right? Second of all, uh, they're never going to be e expensive cards. Like, I think the most expensive one is probably the Misty's, which is like 10-ish dollars, maybe up to 15 if it's a good quality. And they're also not particularly rare there are thousands among thousands of them you know uh so they'll probably hold their value but i don't think they'll ever be worth more you know make sense do you want a card with an 11 year old girl's side boob on it i mean that's what the internet is for why do i need a card for that that this is true <laughs> all right so here here's one uh uh for good low rarity aquapolis and sky ridge cards so Aquapolis and Sky Ridge are the Holy Grail sets for Pokemon collectors. They were the last sets released by Wizards of the Coast before they lost the license to the game, and they were very short printed. Is that the one with Slowking in it? There or is a Slowking in Sky Ridge. Because I, I remember or he, Aquapolis. Because he was like a psychic type, just kind of like his hands, you know, all freaking, know. you know, dictator like behind his back. I don't know if that's the one, <laughs> but they're all e-reader cards. So that's how you can recognize them. Um, and what I'm arguing, because especially Sky Ridge, the, the hollows are extremely expensive. They get ridiculously, 100 plus dollars each sometimes. Uh, I'd say the average is probably like 70. They're expensive. Uh, and Aquapolis is catching up. Uh, what I'm arguing is the low print run makes it so even the commons are worth something. But uh, in particular, I think the... Because uh, every hollow card from those sets can also come as non-hollows. And those non-hollows, I think, are vastly underpriced. You know, uh, because, sure, they're not the special version that is going to be, you know, the god-tier collectible. But 
as we've seen with basically anything collectible, high value items drag up the prices of similar items, right? You, you agree with that? The re, you know, part of the reason why revised dual lands are expensive is because the other rarities, the unlimited beta alpha, are yep. so unattainable. Well, that on top of that, because you need them for basically every format that you can play it in. Right, which is not much, to be fair. Legacy Vintage Commander. That's it. But also Commander's also, probably the biggest culprit. <laughs> please don't play dual lands in your Commander deck. Just play the Battle Bond lands. <laughs> no, no, no. You gotta go full all in. You gotta oh, no. go fetches, duels, every oh. single form of rainbow I sunshine, don't feel like it, color having fixing a 20 you can get. plus thousand dollar commander deck thank you just look at my buddy's decks every single deck he has has fetches and duels so i think uh the average price for a sky ridge non-hollow rare is maybe ten dollars uh, that's, not, that's not bad with a couple of the more expensive ones like the gyarados i think can get up to like 25 i expect those prices within the next couple of years to double at the very least because the hollow versions are so unobtainable for most collectors hey that's a better investment than that stupid ma champ <laughs> this is true can't deny that <laughs> all right so another good thing no bad thing i swear. Good job, Jacob. <laughs> uh, so next we're going to talk about blank cards. So I, I've these have existed for a long time, but I've started seeing them a lot recently. Uh, so what they are is they're generally holographic cards, mm -hmm. but they're error cards where nothing was printed on them. So oh, so... Just the holographic foil. So Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> it's just a blank holographic card. And uh, I've been seeing them, I've seen them pop up on eBay and sell for a decent amount of money, but the place I've especially noticed them and I've had people tell me about from their local areas they've seen them are in lots on Facebook Marketplace where they're like, oh, and it includes this blank card, so I'm asking for $150 for this lot of worthless garbage, right? That gives new meaning to the term ghost rare. So let me... <laughs> Great. <laughs> Let me tell you guys, if you don't know, why that's a bad idea. 99% um, of the time, if you see one of those cards, it's fake. Not a counterfeit card. What it is, is it's a real card that's been treated with chemicals to remove the ink from it. And it's really easy to do. I wish I could, like, bring an example to do. I should have made one. But that's this. what YouTube is for. Yeah, I'm sure you can Google it. Generally, people use acetone or whatever. Uh, to literally take the ink off of a card to create those. Uh, and it's kind of like last episode when we talked about miscut cards and how it's really easy to fake that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just like that. So don't be buying those thinking you're getting some crazy rare collectible. Uh, and especially not from a shady Facebook marketplace seller. I give you good price. Make One it. of a kind. I'll buy it for the <laughs> highest price. What are you buying, stranger? Is it counterfeit and messed up Pokemon cards? Because I got plenty. <laughs> Straight out of the printer. Uh, the next one I have for good stuff are uh, Generation 5 shiny cards. So generally, if a card is shiny, it's worth something. But uh, we've had a couple different times where shiny cards were a big thing. The first was in uh, Generation 2 with Shining Pokemon. Uh, most recently, we've had Hidden Fates, which had tons of shiny cards in it. Uh, but I find one of the ones in the middle, uh, towards the end of the black and white era, they used shiny cards as secret rares. Uh, they're rather hard to pull. I'd say maybe, I don't know the ratio offhand, I'd, I'd guess one in four boxes. Uh, and they are all undervalued. What's coolest about it, though, is a lot of them have special meaning behind why they're chosen. It wasn't just, this is a Charizard, even though there is a Charizard. <laughs> but, for example, one of the sets they did, uh, they were all Haymaker cards. Cards from the original meta Pokemon deck reprinted from, you know, from 1999. Nice. That was really cool. So it was, uh, what, uh, you got Scyther. Oh, I'm going to, I'm hating myself for not remembering. <laughs> Uh, uh, Scyther, was the Electro Buzz one? I don't remember. Mach uh, Machamp. Uh, Machamp. <laughs> Hitmonchan, <laughs> for sure. He lives on our hearts. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll get it eventually. But those cards, I find, for whatever reason, largely undervalued. The, I think 
Charizard's maybe the most expensive at like 30 bucks or one of the Evolutions or something. Uh, it's no wonder they keep reprinting him. They get up to like 30 bucks, uh, and at their least valuable, you can get some of them like execute for like 10 bucks sometimes. It's good. Uh, also, that I'd also throw in the Heart Gold Soul Silver era shinies there too. Uh, and I guess in general, uh, shiny Pokemon are a good thing to invest in, but I think those ones, for whatever reason, are underrated. And as we see, print run is basically gone for all of those sets at this point. Uh, they're going to increase in price. Mm-hmm. Uh, for another good one, actually our last good one, <laughs> is uh, one that I kind of don't feel like talking about because I haven't completed my set yet. <laughs> you know, uh, and in fact, I'm quite far away from it, but I'm getting closer. Uh, but it is absolutely, hands down, 100% my favorite thing related to Pokemon to collect. It's a Japanese exclusive booster set called Web. It, it's called the Web series, and the way it worked was it was online only. So you could buy it only from the Pokemon Center's online website, and they'd ship you booster packs. That was the only way to get it. So it's kind of like the uh, Mythic Editions for Ravnica for Magic the Gathering. Man, Pokemon was ahead of their time. They had secret layers already. Are you ready? You could only get them online, only in Japan, in 2001. Good. Uh, <laughs> Back with the potato quality internet. So, yes. Uh, so, very few people even knew those existed at the time. You know, it wasn't something they highly advertised. It was kind of a gimmick thing. And they're generally all reprints of, of older cards, but with their uh, borders changed to match the e-reader border, except instead of having the little e logo in the corner, because they're not actually e-reader cards, it says web. Um, it's not a huge set. It's like 60 cards. But I love it so much because it's got such an interesting story behind it, and the print runs very small. Uh, and what's cool about it is some of the cards from it right now, you know, before this video goes out and you guys buy them all, uh, you can get for as little as like three, four dollars for the commons. Uh, the most expensive cards can get up to around a hundred. And that's about it. But you could very easily complete the set if you're willing to wait and look for a deal or get bids for two, three hundred bucks. And maybe that's part of the reason why nobody wants to do that kind of things because people don't want to wait. They just want it now. Right. <laughs> and to make matters even better with it, it comes in both first edition and unlimited. <laughs> so if you get the first edition ones, it's even more hooray. I'm sorry, but I'm not a big fan of first edition uh, hot stamped. I'm actually generally not someone who cares about getting the first edition or not. In fact, in general, I prefer getting the non-first editions because of that. Kind of the same thing I mentioned with the Sky Ridge and Aquapolis thing where the other one, the more expensive cards drag up the price of the lower expensive cards. Uh, so I'd rather have the lower investment cost to make the same amount of money. Mm -hmm. Please note when I'm talking about making money off of stuff, I've never sold a Pokemon card in my life. Uh, I But I do frequently trade with other collectors to get things I'm more interested in getting. Uh, so that's the only time it can be an actual value to me. But it's still, again, I'm a nerd. I like looking at this type of stuff. Uh, in another life, I'm probably a stockbroker. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I like that kind of stuff. I'm a nerd, right? Yeah. Uh, so are you ready for our last bad thing? No, I have two... Wait, how did I screw this up? <laughs> I totally screwed this up because I still have two bad things. Oh, no. Oh, well, we're doing the Mount of Glory. <laughs> I don't know what I did, but I broke it. You guys can tell. Is it the one with Link in it? <laughs> <laughs> so the next uh, one for bad stuff we have is uh, Dollar Tree Packs. So, oh. but, so there are these. You can go to a dollar store. I don't know if they do them in other places outside of the U.S. I don't know if Canada's Dollaramas have them or not. Does Walgreens count? I don't know if you can go to Poundland. No. Yeah, Poundland and get them. I don't know. Uh, but here you can only get them at Dollar Trees. And it's $1 and you just get three cards in it. Right? So the cool thing is there's actually good ratio of good cards in them. You can actually save some money if you're looking for the good stuff. Uh, but generally, you have to buy a lot because they're not that 
common out of them. But if, you know, they set out a, a full box of them you, and you buy all of them, you might get some good stuff. Or if you do what most people do. Or they just buy one. No, no, no. You sit there in the store because it's a dollar store and the people behind the counter are getting paid seven twenty five an hour, so they don't care. And you sit there and you take all the packs and you go, this one's heavy. This one's not. This one's not. This one's not for half an hour. And you buy all the good packs because they're super easy to weigh, even with just your hands. If you see a, a, a booster box of Dollar Tree packs uh, sitting in a store and they've been picked through by someone already, assume they have been weighed and there is only garbage left. The only time I would advise buying Dollar Tree packs is if the box was just set out. <laughs> That's the only time I'd touch them. And that kind of goes with normal booster packs as well. You shouldn't be buying loose booster packs, ever. Unless it's from a local game store you trust, or if they're sealed in a blister pack, you should not be buying loose packs. It's so easy to weigh them, especially for Pokemon. Uh, I see people all the time buy, you know, a collection of, here's six packs of X set, you know, that you can buy on eBay from Sketchy McGee. Don't do it. Assume any time you see a loose booster pack, and you've not had your eyes on it since the moment it came out of a booster box. Assume it has been weighed. You agree? Yeah. Would you like to buy this random pack of revised I just pulled out of my pocket for $200? Uh, only if I get the $200. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about uh, resealing packs another time because that's something else you should be wary of and a lot of people aren't knowledgeable on. It's weird because it's hard for me because like, I've been dealing with this type of stuff for 20 years, so some, sometimes it seems quite obvious to me. Um, but every, I see people ask all the time about these types of things in you know Facebook groups or on Reddit, and I'm just like, yeah, that's a fake card, or yeah, that pack's been resealed, or blah, 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 blah. So if you guys want to see that, make sure you subscribe. And uh, the last thing we're going to talk about, uh, I guess the most important, obvious scams. Shiny Charizard, uh, a fresh off market, one of a kind, give you good price. That's exactly how it goes. Uh, I've seen so many times people say, hey guys, just an FYI, don't buy from this person. I got screwed by them because uh, it was on, you know, in a Facebook buy or sell group or on r slash on Pokemon TCG trades or whatever. And they're like, so this person messaged me and showed me their cards and it was an amazing collection with a bunch of shining Charizards and stuff and base set Charizards and, and crazy Lugias and blah, 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 and I wanted it and his price was good. He had no timestamps. The guy was talking super weird, right? Yeah. Uh, asked me to move the conversation off of Facebook, Reddit, whatever, onto some other platform, you know, maybe Kick or WhatsApp right. or Instagram, right? But also being paid in gift cards. They want to be paid in gift cards or money orders or anything else like that and they're like and i did it i'm like why did you do it no i don't get it how people can get like it, it's one thing if you you follow all the right steps and you're careful with your purchases and the person screws you out of things that sucks. But if you're blatantly throwing caution to the wind and buying sketchy things, whether it be, you know, from some guy who says he's got this amazing collection and there's a bunch of red flags, or if you're going on eBay and buying 50 random Pokemon cards and you get screwed on that. Oh boy, another Machamp, my favorite. Yeah, one, <laughs> one Watsy Hollow from back in the day, first edition mystery card. It's all Machamps. It's all Machamps. <laughs> it was the mystery fighter the whole time. So, uh, if you're throwing caution to the wind, you will get screwed. So don't. Have half a brain when you're making any deals online. And if something seems sketchy to you, ask around. It's never a bad thing to go on one of the many Reddit groups or Facebook pages or groups and just say, hey, this is kind of sketching me out. Maybe not name drop the person because, you know, without their permission, that's not that's kind of not cool. But just say, hey, in general, I've got this trade and it seems kind of fishy to me. What do you guys think? Mm -hmm. That's all I got. <laughs> End the episode. <laughs> you No outro? No. End the episode. So <laughs>
no like comment subscribe make sure to check us out on instagram twitter facebook I'm going to message everyone who follows us on Twitter in the next week and be like, I have very good collection Pokemon card. <laughs> I give you for $4,000. It is worth $65 million. You see, I am a Nigerian prince. <laughs> it, it's just a just a chemically just uh, alter-arted Machamp, so it looks like Pikachu. <laughs> <laughs> First edition Machamps. 1,000 palette. Yeah. All right, uh, let's say goodbye. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you'd like to ask specific questions and comments about investing in card games, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, we're also calling it right now. We're going to do another one of these episodes on Yu-Gi-Oh! In the future, at some point. My favorite. Once I give Bryce the allotted number of drinks before we start. <laughs> Please. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for listening to TCG Buzz. New episodes can be found on TCGBuzz.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. For box openings, deck profiles, and more, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.